Hello there, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Chit Chad, and on this video, we're gonna talk about how to rig for 2D animation. Now, when I say 2D animation, the first thing that might come to your mind is something that was more traditionally animated, like the original Disney animated movies, or maybe even the original Looney Tunes, which followed a traditional frame by frame, pose to pose style animation. But there is another method to animating and that is using tween based animation. To talk about this concept, I think we need to get a little animated ourselves. Tween based animation is often associated with the movement of an object through digital means, which is how I'm being animated right now. This is where you create the keyframes and the computer interprets the in-between movement. Before, with hand-drawn animation, you would have to draw all the in-between movement, whereas now the computer can do the work for you. Now, there are many different ways to go about setting up an object or a character. This can depend on aesthetic choices, what that object or character needs to do, and even what program you're working in. But one thing that can be considered constant is that there are dependencies and hierarchies in the way that we move, which leads us to the topic of this video, rigging. In animation, there are two main ways you can go about simulating these hierarchies, and that is with either forward kinematics or inverse kinematics, or FK and IK for short. Let's start with forward kinematics. Now, if I were to move my upper arm, my forearm and hand are gonna move along with it. If I move my forearm, my hand is gonna move along with it. This also provides a natural arc to the movement, which is one of the core principles of animation. Now with inverse kinematics, the hierarchy is reversed. If I move my hand, the forearm and upper arm are gonna follow with it. You'll often see this method used in 3D animation for things like walk cycles or if a character is interacting with an object. Say for example, this block. As you can see in this example, you would want the object affecting the rest of the chain as it's the driving force of the animation. The block is forcing the arm to move backwards and forwards, thus affecting the rest of the links in the chain. Now these hierarchies can be simulated inside of animation programs like Adobe Anime and Adobe After Effects, either utilizing the built-in tech or by downloading third-party plugins. For the sake of this tutorial, we are not gonna be using any plugins, just what comes out of the box when you open up Adobe Anime or Adobe After Effects. And also because of that, we are gonna be focusing on forward kinematics for the most part. However, I will touch on how to do inverse kinematics inside of Adobe Animate towards the end of this video, so be sure to stay around for that. Now with all that said, let's launch Adobe Animate and Adobe After Effects and get started. Step one, separating your character or object into pieces. Now when deciding on rigging an object or a character, we need to consider any and all parts that we want to have move. Each of those parts will need to be isolated from the rest. In After Effects, this is as easy as having all the parts placed on their own layers. However, in Adobe Animate, you'll not only need to place each object on its own layer, but you'll also have to nest each of these objects into their own graphic or movie clip. You can do this by right-clicking on the highlighted object and selecting Convert to Symbol. Be sure to give each of your symbols appropriate names. This not only helps you find things in the library, but will also come in handy when we distribute these to your layers. Each part needs to be crafted individually before we can assemble it all together for movement. If you're working with a full character, the face is often where you're gonna be spending the most amount of your time because you have to account for the eyes, the mouth, the hair, and any other distinguishing features you wanna have move. So definitely take your time. A quick and easy way to disperse all of these pieces into their own layers is by selecting all of your objects, right-clicking, and selecting Distribute to Layers. You will now see that all of your symbols have been placed on their own layer and have been given the name of the symbol. If you notice anything out of order, you can easily drag these layers to the correct spot. Once you have all your moving parts separated out into their own separate layers, we can move on to the next step. Step two, adjusting the point of rotation, AKA the anchor point. In both Adobe Anime and Adobe After Effects, points of rotation, aka the anchor points, are the driving force behind how a character moves. In Adobe Anime, changing the point of rotation is super simple. Make sure to have your free transform tool selected, then select your object. You should see a white dot placed somewhere on your object once it's selected. Normally, by default, it'll be in the middle. This white dot represents your point of rotation. It can be moved around by clicking and dragging that point to where you need it to go on your character or object.
In After Effects, changing the point of rotation requires you to select the object, then select the Pan Behind Anchor Point tool. Once that tool is selected, you can then click and drag the point of rotation to the appropriate place. Be sure to rotate the object around and test this out to make sure this is where you want this anchor point to go. Because believe me, when you start animating, it's a lot more difficult to change. Now continue adding and modifying your anchor points until every moving part is performing the way you envision for your character. Step 3. Creating your hierarchy aka parenting chain. Now that our character or object has all of its pieces separated as well as all of its anchor points in the correct locations, we can now start creating our parenting chain in order to make the forward kinematics work. In Adobe Animate, make sure the parenting view box is enabled on the timeline panel. With that selected, we now have a new section next to our layers that'll allow us to click drag from these color boxes to chain to another object. For example, we will chain our hand object to our forearm, and then from our forearm to our upper arm, and then from our upper arm to the main body. We now have created a successful FK chain. Now in After Effects, we follow a similar method. Next to your layer name, you should see a section labeled Parent and Link to the right. You can either select the name of the layer you want from this drop-down list, or you can click and drag from the swirl icon and connect it to the layer you want it to connect to. Continue doing this method until everything is chained together. If you are applying this to a character, that last link will often be to the main body so that when the main body moves, everything else should move along with it. Again, be sure to test out how these connections are working by applying rotations to individual objects. And remember, it is often a bit tricky to change these connections or anchor points once you start animating, so definitely take your time. And once again, you have created an FK chain. And by utilizing these techniques and using forward kinematics, you can make all sorts of dynamic motion for either your objects or your characters, much like I'm doing here with my animated avatar. But before we wrap this video up, I promised that I would show you a method for using inverse kinematics, and luckily Adobe Animate has you covered with the Bones tool. Now this method works a little differently from what we previously discussed, and will require using the Bones tool in Adobe Animate. This method still requires each object to be separated and nested, however you will not need to adjust the anchor points as the Bones tool places those depending on where you click on the object. Now by default, the Bones tool is often not visible on the toolbar, so what you need to do is go over to these three dots and click on them in order to bring up the expanded toolbar. From there, you should see the Bones tool icon and can click drag it to the main toolbar. With the Bones tool selected, we want to start from the main point of the character or object. In this case, it's going to be the body. We will click on where the center of rotation will be. From there, we will click on the next part in the chain, in this case of the upper arm, we're gonna place it where the shoulder would be, and then from there, the forearm where our elbow would bend, and then the hand where the wrist would be. As you can see, Adobe Animate has created a new type of layer called an armature. This also utilizes its own style of keyframes for animation, so just keep that in mind. By click dragging the end of this chain, in this case the hand, we now have a successful inverse kinematic chain. You can also give yourself more control by applying restrictions. To do so, you can select an individual part of the chain, then go over here to the object panel and adjust the constraints. Once again, keep in mind this object now exists all in this new armature layer, so it will take some getting used to. And that was just a small example of what you can do with rigging for 2D animation. I hope you found these techniques and tips helpful and can maybe use them in your next project or animation. And if you found this video helpful, consider leaving a like and maybe even subscribing. I would really appreciate it. Once again, thank you for watching. And as always, I will chat with you on the next video.